Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video continues our playlist uh, Power BI course series. Uh, if you're not aware already, you can find links to the playlist and all the downloadable material um, in the description of this video. But in today's video, we'll be focused on calculated columns. So the first thing you might be wondering is what is a calculated column? Well, in Power BI, a calculated column is a column you can add to your table where each value is derived from a DAX formula applied row by row. So think of it as customizing your data uh, right within Power BI. So you may have also heard of the term a measure in Power BI. So, so what's the difference between a calculated, a calculated column and a measure. So while both of these um, use DAX formulas, a calculated column actually stores the results uh, for each row in your data model. So this means it's going to consume more memory for each stored value. Uh, alternatively, a measure calculates values dynamically based on the current context. So filters that have been applied on the page, uh, whether they're in your slices or on the page filters. So it doesn't store individual results. It just makes it more, which makes it more memory efficient and obviously more dynamic. So if you wanted to put it into simple terms and you're concerned about memory, then obviously calculated columns are going to be using more memory, whereas measures are going to be using less. Um, but as I mentioned, calculated columns are going to be more specific uh, for your row by row calculations, as we'll look on in a second, whereas measures, you'll probably be looking at a data set as a whole. So trying to give a whole summarization, whether it be a sum uh, for your entire data set. So what we'll do is, like I say, we're going to look at calculated columns in this video and we'll do a dedicated video next on measures. So an example of a calculated column. And as I say, if you've been following along already, you'll notice that I've now added two new additional fields to our underlying data set. They have been reflected in the source file, which again, you can download from the links in the description of this video. Uh, and those two are going to be your quantity. So if I, what I'm going to do is just select my table and then bring into this quantity and then also price. And you can see it's done some of them, which it works okay at the bottom there. But the scenario that I want to use a calculated column for is I want to know, you know, what is the total revenue you could say for this particular line item. And I appreciate we started off with some task data. So this is now probably deviating from the purpose. So maybe it doesn't all tie together, but nonetheless, for this line, I want to know what six times the 135 price is. So I can see what the total revenue is for that line item. And you could do this with a measure, but like I say, we're going to do it with a calculated column so that we can actually store that value as well. So in order to create our, our new column, all we need to go is to our desired table. So you can either go to the table as a whole. So you can see I'm hovering over tasks here, or you can go to a specific field. If you require, it doesn't matter, but ultimately you want to click on the more options ellipsis. And then as you go down, you can see what the two options here for us, we want to go on to new column. And once this opens up, again, you'll, you'll get the exactly the same sort of process of adding a column versus a measure. But like I said, I don't want to go combine them too much more. Um, like I say, we're focusing on columns. So first thing we need to do is give our column a name. So you can see at the moment it's defaulted to a name of column. And the easy way to identify this is the column name will be on the left. You have an equal sign to then demonstrate or show what the expression is for that column. So we'll rename ours to uh, revenue. I think that's the word I used earlier. So that sounds about right. So what is the expression going to be for revenue? So all I need to do on here is go, if I start typing the word quantity, you can see it's found our applicable quantity field from our tasks table. So you can see it's going to be consistent there. Again, I keep saying I'm not going to keep drawing um, comparisons to measures. But when you're working with a calculated column like this, the only fields that you will see are going to be the fields applicable to that table. So if I was to type um, maybe my customer's table, so let's start typing customer. Again, you can see the only matching results that come back are customer fields within my tasks table. It's not found anything within my customer's table. So, OK, another little comparison there to note. But for us, we want quantity. 
And all we're going to do is times the quantity by the price. So to do a times, we're going to use, we're going to hold down our shift button and do the number, number eight to get asterisks. Should you want any other options, so you can use the hyphen to do a minus, you can use obviously the standard plus symbol to do a plus, if obviously you have different purposes than multiplication. But for us, we're gonna to use the asterisk to do a multiplication. I'm gonna do a space just for tidiness. And then if I type into here price, you can see by default it's found a function, but what we just wanna do is navigate down to our desired um, table and field. Again, like I say, just to re-emphasize, the word at the beginning there is your table name and the one in brackets is then going to be your field. So I'll just undo that because I drag some stuff across. Um, so that's the basic format you want to remember. So really simple um, format here. So quantity times price, obviously the, re the result of that will give us our revenue. If we just hit uh, enter, although you could just click the, uh, the tick over here to commit that calculation, but you can see it's done it nice and quickly. So I'm just gonna click away from here. Nothing looks like it's happened at the moment, but as we go over to our tasks table, you can now see we've got this value in here or a new field called revenue. So we can now drag our revenue into our table and you can see you've got the result there. So we can now see as a row by row, what the total revenue was. So one times 136 here, easy math, so you can see that one. Alternatively, our six example at the top here, we can see the revenue is 810. And because we've got the sum turned on for all our fields, you can also see the totals here, which could be useful to you as well. One other thing you might want to do with this is of course, play with the formatting ever so slightly. So for us, we're gonna, this is obviously a currency. So what we're gonna do is just select our calculated column for revenue. And up the top here, you can see we've got some formatting options underneath this additional tab we now got called column tools. So all I'm gonna do is go to the currency one and I want to show this as English United Kingdom. So I'm gonna select that, but again, you could obviously select any applicable currency to your scenario. And giving it just a couple of seconds there to refresh, you can now see that we've got the pound symbol in there as well. However, if you wanted any other currency or other formats, again, you can play around with that here in our drop down or in terms of decimal places, if you wanted to reduce or increase those, you can do that again here. I'm just gonna leave mine with the number two that we've got there as it stands. So that summarizes a great way or a scenario as to why you'd want to use a calculated column. One thing I have missed though, is if we go into our table view, you can now see that we've got our uh, new column is available to us here as well. So. This is again is going to be an item that won't we won't have access to when it comes to working with measures, but like I say, we'll cover that off in the next video. But so as always, especially if you're following with the series, now would be the time I suggest having a go at doing this in your file. Um, if you haven't downloaded the um, the source file yet, again, lastly we'll mention it's in the links or the links can be found in the description of this video. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.